Hello, Planet Sewers. Welcome in. Welcome back to the Muse Tropical Zoo. It's done in franchise mode. Um, so I'm using the space next to the cougars. We're going to put in the North American beavers and we're going to work on their habitat during this episode today. So it is partial real time and partial speed build through the rock work. Um, we will not finish today, so it's just a couple of pictures at the end. Um, I was struggling with the space, so on the next episode for the franchise mode, we'll work out giving them what they need for the water requirements. Um, so I just kind of stopped there. I was actually kind of struggling a little bit to get it to work around what I had in my mind versus what the beavers actually need. So. Um, we're going to leave off where it has a good view, but is still not fully functional for these guys as far as the water requirement. So we're going to put in the little waterfalls here. So I'm going to take out this, uh, original barrier that I had, um, that is, um, uh, no, there we go. And I'm kind of working out in my mind where the water is going to be coming from, where it's going to go. So I knew I wanted the waterfall in the back there. And I'm really trying to avoid the other null barrier that's back there for the sun bears. I did not want to connect them. Sometimes when you connect too many habitats together, sometimes the game gets a little confused, especially with the null barriers. At least that's happened to me. So right here, I am just trying to keep them a little bit separate. Also, in case I need to do some editing to the barriers, which I do, um, it won't upset the barrier behind the habitat for the sun bears. Um, so my original plan was to use terrain here, and I ended up backing up from that plan and using barriers to hold the water in and covering them with rocks. So that is the speed portion is putting in the rocks. Um, Otherwise, you're just watching uh, rock placement for a long time. Um, but anyway, so I was kind of thinking how I wanted to do this um, waterfall here. So I'm going to switch this one out for a smaller one um, and the different levels. Getting multi-levels of water can be a little complicated. So I'm just using this kind of as a height reference and it's going to get moved around a couple of times. So we're going to put that right there for now and we're gonna get uh, barriers out at first like I said I was trying to do the terrain with the stamp tool and that was a fail so I ended up going with some glass barriers as well as um, just a concrete barrier because it doesn't need to be glass where they can't uh, see through um, I thought about maybe adding kind of a walkthrough in the middle of the habitat to get a better uh, view of them back here uh, but I just I ended up not doing that but more that I think about it maybe I'll go back when I come back in here um, to do that it's just it requires I think the reason I didn't do it now that I think about it is I would have to have uh, right here -ish, um, some kind of terrain to hold the water in and then tunnel through it right at the bottom of the water level and that does get really tricky. Um, and so I think that's why I decided not to go for it. Um, I was trying to keep this not too difficult and more on the simple side, but unfortunately, I guess, um, you know, the, the odds were against me here and the beaver needs way more water than I realized um, when looking at their, uh, their requirements so I thought originally we'll just have a nice little deep pool back here for them and then we'll come straight out to the path and kind of like a river um, have a nice area for them to swim in as they come forward so I wanted to really give you know that river feel like it's kind of you know cascading down into a small river uh, as we come towards the front viewing area for the beavers and I had to go and move all of these 
that I had used temporarily to kind of map out because I wasn't sure what I was going to do when I originally kind of plotted my space for them. Um, like I said, this little space is not quite enough. So I'm actually going to go all the way towards that building and bring the front section out a little more and give them a little bit more water space. But every time I do these uh, additions or changes to the water, um, I have to bring all the barriers back up to a regular height um, to, to put water back in. So a little bit higher than the actual water level and then bring all the barriers back down to the top of the water um, to give that effect that you know, you're just right there at the water's edge. I, I just don't like the um, extra space with the water. And then also you have, um, you know, in the back, I'm covering all that with rocks. So yeah, I don't want a huge rock bank there. I want it just at the edge, just kind of look like it's falling through. Right here, that post was just too close to the pass in order to change that null barrier into a regular barrier. So I had to move it a couple of times to get it to the right spot. And so I have the front section going and um, that kind of marks where I want everything to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and take out one panel after I decide how I'm going to bring the water in. So I'm just looking around trying to decide how I want that to go. And so I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and add in a, another waterfall towards the front. Um, but you know, since I've already put these guys in here, they went straight for the escape. They're just, woohoo, let's go. So I need to go ahead and put something in the way. Um, I didn't want to take up too much of their uh, traversable area there. The rocks tend to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this around and then drag it this way and it still didn't quite fit the way I wanted. So we're gonna adjust it a little bit and then go ahead and get this side uh, looking nice compared to um, the other side here where the door is. Sorry, my brain just derailed, all words disappeared. Um, so we'll go back to the front later and add a little more to cover that post. Um, I'm gonna just pull this rock back and give that door um, you know, visibility. And then we're gonna use a different rock to kind of block off this other side. So we'll just borrow the one that's already there and bring it up a little higher and get it just up there with the door. I'm not too worried about that back side. It's a staff area. So we'll just give it a little nudge and we've got a nice little surrounding of that door right there with the rocks. So let's see, um, yeah, we have unhappy beavers. <laughs> like I said, they're really unhappy. So I was like, okay, well, let's get their water in. Um, but I guess I didn't make it deep enough and there's just not enough water surface either when I get to the end. So I'm gonna work on that. Like I said at the uh, beginning of the video and the next video will have the solution to their water problem. So we're gonna go ahead and finish off this little riverway that I was putting in. So we're gonna come this way with it and I don't want it to attach right there. Uh, anytime you make a very sharp angle with the water, it looks really weird. So I decided we're gonna come right here and we'll connect like that. And we'll make that another little waterfall. So we're gonna need to um, kind of bring this down a little bit so that I can add you know, some water right here too that's more at the beaver's level. And I just thought that, that would give it a nice, you know, transition with the three different levels of water. So of course that barrier is in the way and so is the path, but I'm gonna leave the path there. I'm not gonna mess with that. Another option I could have done is uh, gotten rid of that path and maybe I'll still do that uh, instead of what I was trying to do and give them, you know, a little walk over the beavers, you know, do a bridge. That may be a good idea instead of trying to use that space to the right to add more water for them. 
I think I might do that. That sounds like a better idea. I can just blow this up right here and, you know, give them some more space to the other side. I like that idea. Um, so here we go. We're going to add this waterfall just to cover that little glass that's right there. And once I get the water in, I'll move it around a little bit more. Right here, I was just kind of going for uh, where the barriers were and how far out I wanted it to come. I'm going to cover all these with rocks so they're not just, you know, concrete waterfalls. And we'll get this one in place. I think a little more nudging and I'll be happy with it. Um, it's going to get moved again. It always has, you know, a little bit more of the barrier until you get the water in and you can drop it down. Um, I was trying to figure out the height that I wanted here because I can add in the water effects uh, right there, which I forgot. And I was like, oh, I'll just sink it in and add you know, the water bottom in. And so you can see here, I've already pushed play and you can kind of see where the water bottom, you know, should be. So I need to go back around and, you know, add in that water bottom at the correct height for some of these waterfalls. On this one, I just opted to move the waterfall a little bit so that it's visible and hitting at the surface of the water. And then for this one over here, I had scooted it over. I needed to add one more barrier um, right there, that straight piece, so that I could get the water level for the higher uh, water, uh, water swimming area. And so I'm gonna scoot this one uh, into its spot, which is gonna be kind of right about here and we're gonna bring it up um it's you know it's its own thing I, I originally kind of wanted them to connect but now I, when i got here i didn't want to redo that front part so i didn't want to leave it uh all low because that really wouldn't make sense either so we're just gonna add the water at the level of that uh, one that's over there and we're gonna add water here and then we're gonna start working on our rocks once we get all these barriers uh, brought down. So I'm gonna get this just a little more of a nudge um, to be kind of level with the water and be able to get the rocks in. And so there we go. That little section's just under the water so they kind of match up. And we'll leave it right there and go ahead and go around and drop these barriers down sometimes you can get them all at once and that's what I was trying to do right here using these little arrows that slide around uh, but unfortunately one of these barriers will not uh, be dropped it actually grabbed that other one so I went ahead and dropped it all right there um, so we can get that back side to the right height um, but it didn't let me do one of them because I think it's the post over there. It won't let me just drop the glass. So I was like, oh man. So we're gonna drop these individually. This one was being a little bit of a not nice. So I had to do it post by post to get it to let me drop. And then I could get the middle part to come down. It was, I think the angle that it's at that was making it do that, I'm not sure, but we got it. So I'm just going around and we're gonna grab each one of these and use that little height thing. And just right when it turns blue, we'll let it go. And that's where we're gonna build uh, the rocks around it. So it's this one that it wouldn't let me drop down. Um, I could have taken the water back out, but I would have to raise all of these that I just dropped. And I could have added like a post a little closer to the back so that whole thing wouldn't need to be so high. But I went ahead and just left it that way. It's okay. And uh, that side will just be a little higher of a rock ridge. Anyway, so we're gonna add these rocks here and add in a little bit of a different color. So I was using a uh, tropical and um, temperate rocks here to create this little riverbed area and then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing in this direction so that it's not you know a clear shot all the way through um, and then we're gonna go ahead and decorate around the actual waterfall 
cover up that last little bit of glass. I could have, I guess, taken that out and uh, put it, you know, in the back section and line that up better. That's another way you could do it. Uh, sorry about the dog jingles. They're back there running around. Yeah, I can hear their tags. Sorry about that. Um, anyways, so I did add, it looks like I grabbed kind of a, a different rock right there, like a tundra rock, um, and put that right there. So just giving different types of uh, rock surfaces and colors, trying not to make it so repetitive. And then we're gonna go ahead and decorate with the bottom. Now that I'm looking at it, I kind of wonder if I could maybe satisfy that depth by taking the rocks out of the bottom of this. I'm not sure, or um, you know, dropping them down a little bit lower. I'm wondering now if those are in the way of giving that two meter depth that it was wanting. Um, so I'll have to go back and check that. So we're gonna finish this side off here and go ahead and add in, add in excuse me, a little bit more rocks here and doing the same thing with the different types of rocks. Um, another way to give it, you know, a little more variation is use some of the smaller ones and uh, stick those in on top and kind of blend them in a little differently. Um, I just kind of alternated back and forth a little bit. And then on some of them, I did add a little bit of that variation that I was talking about, uh, more so on the ramp I'm getting ready to build because when I checked their traversable, of course they can't get up there. Um, I didn't think they would be able to, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and copy this over to this guy here. And I think, did I? Yeah, I did. Uh, I was doubting myself for a second. I was like, wait, did I do the, um, the waterfall back there? Uh, I did. So we're gonna just kind of grab some more rocks and blend those around this waterfall uh, container. I don't know which I would call it, but uh, the waterfall itself. So it has a nice rocky appearance. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this big one. And then I decided on the back side, we're just gonna bring up that uh, little barrier for the sun bears back there. And then I'm flipping these guys over just to kind of give it some support into the water itself. And I end up taking some of these rocks out because I'm gonna need to extend the habitat and move some of these walls around in order to get the water space that is required for these guys. And we're going to continue on with the rock work. I decided to go ahead, duplicate a little bit down there, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in that same kind of rock bottom. And again, I may need to just go in here and drop this down a little bit more instead of having like a stair step um, effect in there. So maybe that will fix some of the problems with the habitat. We'll see. Um, and I also struggled to get their enrichment with the log in. Um, ended up kind of putting it in the back, which, you know, the guests can't see and that's unfortunate. Um, I could always build, you know, a nice little walk up on this side uh, so they can see in, kind of like I did uh, for the cougars. I don't know, we'll see. Um, I decided I would go ahead and let them have all of this out uh, out here um, since I was running out of room and I really didn't want to move what I'd already built. I was trying to avoid that. So I went ahead and just kind of put in a falsetto gate to keep them from coming out on the path right there. So they actually can kind of roam around in the staff areas. I'm not sure how nice beavers are when they're in captivities. So I don't know if that would be, you know, something a zoo might actually do. I would need to look that up. And we're getting towards the end of the rock work for this habitat. I can see that they can make it everywhere. So that's where we're gonna stop for today. I hope you have a great week and may the RNG odds be ever in your favor.